Johannes, thanks uh, for inviting us uh, into the headquarter of edX and uh, having the opportunity to talk with you in, in this nice facility. And now, uh, just to uh, have a quick chat with you afterwards, one thing that came across in our delegation visit was that there are like um, two things happening at the same time, or of course maybe more, but just uh, these two elements from the from the uh, MOOC platform um, developments. We see on the one hand uh, something that you call micromasters, where uh, content is bundled and made available to uh, learner uh, groups that are really interested in this. Um, on the other hand, we understood that uh, some of your partner institutions are now very eager to develop a more unbundling uh, concept where you, you have the micro uh, content uh, modules or yep. pieces, snippets, uh, and, and they say that this is a, a really big uh, movement now for engaging professors and getting learners uh, more flexible uh, to, to um, study things online. So what is your... Uh, perception uh, from these uh, trends that happen seem to happen at the same time. Where, where is this uh, uh, taking edX? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And and ultimately, there are two things happening simultaneously that we hope at some point will connect again, and that are already connected. So, if you think about MicroMaster, it's really unbundling existing curricula. It's taking the traditional degree and unbundling the traditional degree to the extent that, quite frankly, we felt is feasible if you want to keep the currency of record alive. Um, universities and learners today still look for the masters, for the bachelors. And so taking that away at this point was not a decision that was feasible for us in order to continue to be sustainable. On the other hand, the movement that is led by Harvard and others, uh, we see this micro-bundling or unbundling into micro-pieces. And quite frankly, our hope, and we are working with Harvard on this, is that ultimately those micro-pieces can be combined and can be bundled into whatever is the appropriate outcome. So one can imagine that right now a micro-master consists of four courses from one university. Well, the first question we're asking ourselves, does it have to be four courses from one university? Could it be four courses from four universities? The next question might be, does it have to be four courses? Could it not be 50 individual components that make up a certain certificate at the end? And so we're segmenting the content into various pieces to ultimately test the hypothesis we have, and that is, what drives the best and most positive learning outcome? Uh, one one uh, other uh, thing that uh, I found very interesting, because we are in contact for a long time now, and yeah. uh, I feel any time you, you share uh, how edX is developing its collaboration model, its partnership model, I see more and more national platforms um, uh, are rising up. Um, in this direction, um, uh, what could you say is is uh, is edX learning perspective in the way um, where in which systems it works uh, best that uh, you have a kind of uh, national ministry that is uh, hmm. uh, the, starting a collaboration um, and then you have the higher ed institutions uh, systems or sceneries that, that need to collaborate uh, on that yep. end well, where is it working best and why so when we started out the collaborations with, with ministries or national entities, um, it's probably fair to say it was easiest to initiate with centralized national ministries. France was one of the first one, quite centralized. The minister could decide something, and more or less the institutions had to choose whether they participate or not if they want to receive funding. Um, same in other entities um, that we collaborate on more national scale, whether it's China and so on. So initially there was, quite frankly, that focus on more centralized national um, entities. However, what we're seeing is that the federal model actually is quite supportive of national initiatives as well. 
because in some ways the federal model allows greater strength by numbers and greater diversity, which ultimately even the centralized models have found out to be of critical value. So defining centrally what education has to look like and how it's executed at the university level is a complex undertaking at best. And that's where the federal model, for example, in Germany, Germany would be a prime candidate to pursue such initiative because you can bring strength and different perspectives to a national initiative. And uh, referring to Germany, I mean, uh, you are a German, we are coming from Germany over here to learn what's, uh, what's happening, what's the ecosystem yeah. around here on the East Coast and in Boston especially. What do you think, because we also had that in the discussion, is it that Germans can take home or should take home? What is it that you feel uh, would um, dynamize maybe the, um, the developments within the German hmm. higher education? Um, without sticking to stereotypes, <laughs> but I will <laughs> revert to them a little bit. One of the things that does appeal to me about being here in the U.S. is that um, going back to the concept of having a hypothesis, um, Failure or not succeeding with your original hypothesis is not seen as failure. It's seen as an opportunity to change things. It's seen as an opportunity to try again or try something different. And I do think that perhaps there is a greater stigma attached to not succeeding with your original hypothesis in Germany. And then people will point fingers, particularly from the academic institutions. Well, didn't I tell you? I mean, to some extent, that's what edX is experiencing when many people today say, well, you started out, you wanted to educate a billion people, you've only educated 23 million, so you're a failure. People are not completing courses saying, well, that just depends on how you measure failure and what learning outcomes you've achieved. So that, to me, is one lesson to be learned. Um, don't be afraid to be imaginative and don't be afraid to... Um, be disappointed in some ways. And then secondly, quite frankly, um, funding is critical. And that's something that I think uh, in the past, certainly, Germany has struggled with for new innovative initiatives. Well, let's we'll see where we are heading to. But thanks a lot for um, providing us this, uh, this direction. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.